So today we're going to talk about the compelling reason. Now, we referred to it previously, all right, as one of the three things. So let me share with you something that will help you make sense to our session today. Most people think that most people, most people think that most people, play on words, fall into one or two categories in sales. Either they're a prospect or they're a sale, right? So everyone that you talk to, right, that kind of waves their hand a little bit in most people's ideology is a potential sale, or at the very least, they're a prospect. And the problem being, and I get this a lot, right, somebody will call and say, oh my God, Don, I just lost a big one. And as we autopsy the conversation, I find that not only did they not lose it, they never had it to start with. So what they were thinking was lost was never a possibility. So people actually fall into four categories. So if you're writing, and I'll point out where you write notes, write this, all right? They fall into one of four categories. It's not just prospect and, and customer or client. It's four. The first thing they are is a suspect, right? They possibly kind of, maybe if the sun works just right, could be something. But they start off as a suspect. So if you get somebody who just maybe, possibly, if the sun just aligns, possibly, would be something, I'm not going to encourage you to jump in your car and go out there. That's why the phone is there, to have compelling conversation, meaningful conversations. Now, if we realize that that suspect can be helped by our product or service, we move them into the second category. And that is a prospect. Right? So if you think about it, you've got suspect first, you've got prospect second, and assuming that they are qualified, they go into the third category, which is qualified prospect. In order to be qualified, they have to, A, have a compelling reason to buy, number one. Right? They've got to have a compelling reason to buy, right? If, if, if they've got no compelling reason to buy, it's probably not a good chance we're going to make a sale. They also have to have money, because we're in the money business. Right? There's nothing, I say this frequently to people, there is nothing that I know of for free that's truly going to help you, right? Even the sessions that you take, right? It's going to be coaching and a lot of other things that are going to be able to get you where you need to be. And then finally, assuming that the qualified prospect and you do everything right, then they move to a customer. So there's four places they could be as opposed to prospect or sale, a suspect, the suspect moves to prospect. If you can satisfy them, you have a product or service that can help them. They move from sus or prospect to qualified prospect when you confirm that they have money, they have a compelling reason to buy, and they are the decision makers. And then finally, all things being equal, and you move into the final one, which is a client. Now, if you think of it in terms of that, this is going to make a lot more sense to you because we're going to talk about the compelling reason that people do everything. People don't do anything without a compelling reason, especially if it involves money. And there's lots of sales training organizations around the world, and each has different names for it. Sandler, for example, the Sandler Selling System, calls it pain. They call it pain. Now, it could be real pain. It could be like you go to the dentist or the doctor, or you, it could physically be pain. More times than not, however, it's a level of dissatisfaction from where you are to where you'd like to be. So although it could be physical pain, a lot of time that dissatisfaction is painful.